I think the voice of the employee is getting stronger and stronger from my perspective, from the media. If, if you look at uh, me looking at it from a social media and HR perspective, I think managing the voice of the employee okay, and his expectations, uh, that's I think some, something which we need to look at seriously. Um, I think more as time passes, you will see that voice increasing louder and louder. And I think how that voice is managed, I'd look at it more importantly from that perspective. Of course, there are the standard HR challenges, I think, which, uh, which is well spoken and well written about. Okay, and I think there's a lot of expert textbooks available here. This is uncharted water. And I think, therefore, it's important that uncharted water, you know, has a little bit more influence. And people who are relevant and in that piece actually look up to it and make a huge contribution. If you keep in mind the purpose or objective of the HR, which is to deliver or ensure a quality of human resource of an organization, most important thing is to anticipate the emerging uh, trends, keeping in uh, view the changing demography of the workforce, anticipate those and uh, be proactive in bringing in those practices. So, the, I, w I mean, as SHRM says, the term says, it is the era of next practices. The best practices are now gone, and we have to focus on bringing in the next practices. Yeah. Technology has accelerated the access to information, but information in itself doesn't provide justified actionables. <clears throat> so, I think uh, emerging trends do with analytics, whether they be predictive kind or even past heuristics, uh, or rather developing heuristics from past data and analytics. These seem to provide a lot of uh, promise what exact potential these will have for HR as a profession is something I look forward to. There's been a lot of conversation around uh, HR as a <clears throat> decision science. I think that's something that I look forward to too. So these are some of the trends that I would look forward to. I also see a lot of uh, the human uh, dimension coming there. I think the cost of progress has been the neglect of the emotional, psychological health. I would even say the spiritual dimensions of uh, uh, growth and enablement. I think these are challenges that uh, the profession should dearly look forward to. See, social media is a, is a big thing which people are talking about and I don't think in India we are yet prepared for social media because there is, uh, there is a pros and a cons. Uh, which is there. Uh, I was very recently with the LinkedIn uh, group where they were talking about you know stuff which is actually happening in the virtual media, how you can map your contacts, what is it that you need, need to do, how do you become a proactive recruiter. So these are some of the issues which I think uh, will come up. But I think as HR practitioners uh, we need to sit back and think about the kind of work we are doing today. There are there are stuff that we do which are transactional in nature and then there are other things that we do which can have a high impact. Uh, so there is this oft repeated uh, cliched statement about uh, HR business partnership. So there is a need for HR people to be able to move out of being administrators or looking after hygiene aspects of the organization in the HR function and to become more of a consultant, internal consultant. And I think for that uh, HR people should get into the shoes of the business people. So they have got to be as smart as the business people um, and uh, therefore they must learn about the business um, you know, and be able to talk the same language that the business managers do. And I think you've got to extract your HR agenda from the business strategy. So that is when you can begin to make an impact. We have been trying to understand in the Indian context what is uh, some of the practices that uh, we need to focus on. I think India, unlike other countries, uh, is going to have a very large population of younger people. Uh, we al already have around 50% of our people less than 25 years uh, of age. So one of the key areas that we are uh, spotted as an extreme is that how do you manage multi-generational diversity in the workplace? Uh, this has a uh, complete um, uh, impact in terms of the entire uh, HR practice horizon. So whether it is the way you lead uh, people in the organization, the way you communicate, the way you collaborate, the way you engage, we do believe that uh, organizations will have to turn almost 360 degrees uh, in terms of how they do it when they look at this younger workforce. Uh, we have started doing some research in this area and we find that 
uh, there is really not too much data in the Indian context where uh, you, in terms of how do you define generations, how do you actually find the common ground uh, between generations and that, therefore that's going to be one focus area. Uh, another related area which we uh, believe is going to be the next area is this whole area of accelerated uh, leadership development. So we do believe that today you're seeing companies like Tata's, Wiplos, uh, you know, almost every company is facing a vacuum of leadership and there's a need to develop business leaders for the future. So this is going to be a key area and how do you, you know, kind of um, accelerate and crash the time for development. Uh, so learning will have to be very much through critical experiences on the job, identifying what are the critical competencies and providing the support and infra infrastructure less on, say, the traditional method of training. Uh, so, uh, and also more on things like uh, leadership coaching and mentoring. Uh, so we are looking at here again uh, a framework uh, which is relevant to the Asian context uh, because most of the models of leadership and coaching are really on um, uh, in the in the U.S. Uh, or, or the Western framework. So I think to me these are the two big uh, challenges that we're going to face today in our conference. There was one more which was about how do you uh, you know quantify or build the HR brand. Uh, I think that that's also probably a third area. So the very first thing I think we should look at is uh, that how to really skill the HR uh, team right from top to bottom. Then second is how do we really, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, make it strategic in the sense of business partner uh, like uh, Dave Ulrich, uh, you know, and uh, huge lead and so many people have talked about it so much. Uh, but I suppose we still are uh, more on to rhetorics, you know. So I think it's time, you know, we really uh, stand together in business and to, uh, you know, deliver that business. Uh, we actually skill our HR to manage the other line manager's support system and ensure that the, you know, vision or the mission of the company is achieved, keeping external customer sustainability in mind. So another thing which is a big, big uh, issue which I think should be of next practice is the ethics of the people. The way people treat each other, the way people treat uh, our, you know outside customers. So ethics I think is the next huge challenge.